Sultan Abdulhamid Khan was born the reformist founder of modern Turkey. Sultan ruled Ottoman Empire strong for 33 years. One of the global icons of Muslim Ummah in modern era seen as one of the caliphs, who tried to return caliphate to Islamic roots. Among the Ottoman sultans, Abdulhamid used the title of caliph the most. He encouraged Islamic identity, telling Muslims living under European powers to unite into one polity. He attempted to expand Islam by sending religious teachers as far away as South Africa and Japan. Sultan emphasized the empire's Islamic character, reasserted his status as the caliph, and called for Muslim unity behind the caliphate. He succeeded briefly in reasserting Islamic power. This threatened several European colonial powers like Austria, Russia, France, Britain. The Ottoman Order in 1899 On a request from the United States government as caliph to Tazik Sultanate, located in the Philippines, resulted in Tazik people heeding him and surrendering. For the first time, many communities such as Indian Muslims Berbers Tatars Albanians started to accept Ottomans as caliphs, and that too with socio-political authority, not just nominal figureheads. Building educational infrastructure and reducing the national debt. The elements of his strategy of implementing ideological reforms, while building a welfare state, can be seen even in modern Turkish politics elsewhere. Apart from his Islamic mindset, two things stood out in Sultan Abdul Hamid's life, which made him one of the most liked caliphs in almost a millennia. One was his love respect towards Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Second was his resistance in Palestinian matter. He commissioned Hijaz Railway in 1900 that connected Damascus with the Muslim holy cities of Mecca and Medina. The railway took eight years to build, and the tracks finally reached Medina in 1908. While the Medina station was established, each hammer was covered with felt cloth, to respect Prophet Muhammad's soul. Similarly, to avoid excessive sound. The train's wheels were also covered with felt cloths. It's said that he ordered work around Medina, to be done with extreme care, and as much less noise as possible, so that it does not cause disturbance to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and the people. His order was due to the adab that comes from Surah Hujurat, verse 2. When Sultan introduced electricity to Medina in 1325 AH, he beautifully lit up the Prophet's mosque first. He had such adab that he placed electricity in Medina before his own palace in Istanbul. The first chandelier's generators were sent by the Nizam of Hyderabad, India. Some of stories regarding the his love for Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him have been well documented and immortalized through media. There is another story where he threatened to go to war against France over a drama which reportedly insulted and abused Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him forcing the French government to close it down. Another distinct feature of his caliphate was resistance to the Zionist schemes and preservation of Aqsa Mosque. In 1871, Ottomans declared 80% of Palestine as state property. After his ascension Sultan increased preventive measures against the Jewish settlement in Palestine. In 1883, he restricted sale of Palestinian lands decided to take strategic territory himself. In 1900, Sultan restricted Jews stay in Palestinian territory to 30 days. He further prohibited the sale of territories to foreign Jews in the Ottoman Empire, including Palestine. Theodor Herzl Leader of Zionists offered to pay the Ottomans foreign debts and to provide propaganda for the Ottoman Sultan in Europe, in exchange for opening Palestinian lands to Jewish settlement and transferring governance to the Jewish people. Despite such a big offer he was unable to even secure an audience with Sultan Abdul Hamid. The Sultan declined this offer with the famous saying. I won't sell anything, not even an inch of this territory because this country does not belong to me but to all Muslims. It was the issue that cost him his throne. In a letter from Sultan, 
in September 22, 1913, he said. I quit being caliph because of the oppression threats by the Young Turks. This group insisted that I approve the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine. I rejected this proposition. They finally offered 150 million British gold pieces. I rejected this as well and I told them, I would never agree with you even if you offer not 150 million British gold but all the gold in the entire world. I served the Muslim community for more than 30 years I did not let my forefathers down. Following my final response, they agreed on my dethronement and sent me to Thessaloniki. I pray to God, I did not accept to establish a new state on Palestinian lands on the Ottoman state and the Islamic community. Sultan's life was similar in some aspects to Tipu Shahid, both pious Muslims. Intelligent brilliant-minded rulers who ruled a difficult time yet left an immortal mark on history. Both were undone mainly due to internal politics treachery of some Muslims rather than foreign powers. Both great patrons of art, promoters of education and infrastructure, and Muslim identity. Focused on welfare state and tried to arrest the slide but failed and paid price, one with deposition and one with shahada. Leaving people to wonder what if. Sultan Abdul Hamid however was fighting bigger battles on a much larger level. He was the upholder of 1,400 years old tradition of Muslim rule, and last symbol of unified Muslim power. His removal ended a vital Muslim concept, which has not returned despite 120 years of efforts. He passed away on February 10, 1918. For the Muslims all around the world. He is a key reason for the nostalgia and respect towards the Ottoman Caliphate and the last one to genuinely attempt to unify the Muslim Ummah. May his soul rest in peace and may his sins be forgiven.